Nancy is more independent. They're like yeah. overseen by a bigger company, Gray Line Sightseeing. So, so, so your, your company is pretty small. But before we get into all that, go back to the coffee guy that you was talking about. Oh, you, that guy, yeah, the yeah. coffee. You, you, no, for, first of all, where, where, where are we right now again? We're on Granville Island, which mm -hmm. used to be an, an industrial site, but mm -hmm. developed by the government of Canada and the uh, um, engineers of Vancouver's early development. Mm -hmm. So it used to be an industrial site. Mm -hmm. To this day, we still have this industrial complex, the cement factory down here. It's been there for about 100 years. But oh, they've look, they, they, they have, uh, they've designed it. Yeah, they've incorporated the arch theme. That's, uh, the cement silos are painted artistically by Brazilian twin brothers. Uh, it's called Giant. But they, but they still do uh, cement work? Well, it's still a cement factory, right. so they have a prestigious location because they're close to downtown and there's always lots of construction downtown. Mm -hmm. So they actually, from what I've heard, undersell delivery costs compared to other cement contractors. Oh, well, there you go. Yeah, so okay. they're allowed to stay down here. Uh, but they're pioneers for this area. So tell me about this coffee guy you, 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 that you love so much. Because well, I, I, I just, thought, this started because I told you about a friend of mine in South Africa who does a, a coffee bean roots. Yeah. And I said, oh, you two should get together. You're a fantastic tour guide. He's, yeah, yeah. His company is fantastic, too. So I just wanted to, his name is Ian, Ian, um, um, Ian Harris. Anyway, um, tell me about this, this coffee guy. Well, I, I don't, I can't remember his name. I just know the company is called uh, Choices. Or, what is it? No, hold on a second sure I may have this correct. What's it called? No, it's called Origins. Sorry. Yeah, Origins. So this guy buys his coffee beans from farmers around the world directly. Mm -hmm. So it's it's uh, f farmer friendly. It's mm -hmm. fair trade. Mm -hmm. uh, they're organic, the beans. He custom grinds the coffee, the coffee beans depending on how you make your coffee. He will ask you how you make your coffee and he'll grind the beans accordingly so that he gets what, in his opinion, would be the best way of getting coffee. Yeah, okay, go ahead and honk, like that's going to make a difference. <laughs> Maybe they're not really from uh, from Vancouver. No, it's a FedEx driver, he's in a hurry. Oh. But uh, he's behind me, so he's got to be a little bit patient. He can't just act like he owns the road, mm. which he doesn't. Is that, is, that, is that a Vancouver attitude? You say, oh, oh right, sure. No, it's just FedEx. You're in a hurry. They're on a schedule, right? He's got packages delivering. No. He's on a time frame, so. No, but I mean, your, your response to him, that's my... <laughs> oh, I was just like, well, hey, you're being rude. You're behind me and you're honking at me like as if I'm in your way, so. Mm. It was just a reaction. I understand, but the person in front of you... I'm not trying to be you, rude. I'm just like, hey. No, I'm saying the person in front of you was, was stopping because somebody was crossing the street. So yeah. I guess the FedEx guy didn't say that. But I'm going to go, for, go back to the orig, origin, Origins guy, the, the well, coffee guy. Well, there's not much else I can say in addition to what I've already said because I don't know a lot about him personally. Mm -hmm. The rare opportunity that I'm actually able to go in there and mm -hmm. buy coffee from him because mm -hmm. he is closed most of the time. Mm -hmm. I don't get a lot of time to chat with him, but I know he's a really nice guy and he's he gives me a break on the price sometimes. And, because you're a regular. Yeah, and he, so he recognized me. And, hey, how's it going? Mm -hmm. Well, now, you're, you're, you're also a regular. In Va you say you've been in Vancouver since, what, in the 60s? What? I moved here in 1969 from uh, Southern California. My mom was from California, mm -hmm. and my dad was from Florida. So moved here from Southern California after they were together for a while because we were living there at the time before we moved here. My grandma lived in El Monte, mm -hmm. which is a suburb of L.A., Mm -hmm. so we moved here from El Monte, 1969. But you also along, along your tour. What, what, what's your tour company called again? What's it called? Well, the company is called Land Sea Tours, mm -hmm. and uh, they were formed in 1985, mm -hmm. which was a key year for development of tourism in Vancouver. Mm -hmm. It was right before the World Expo, mm -hmm. 1986. Mm -hmm. So the company started out pretty small with uh, by two guys with one bus, mm -hmm. and just slowly grew over time. Uh, up until the pandemic, we actually grew to having about 50 vehicles in the fleet. We had about 100 staff members. We had uh, lots of buses. We had SUVs. We had uh, vans like this one, which we we even had a luggage van. We, we would, uh, part of our service is picking up and dropping people off at the cruise ships uh, before and after their cruises. Mm -hmm. If it was before a cruise, they could do a tour and then get dropped off at the cruise ship and their luggage would be brought on board for them and brought to their stateroom. If it was after a cruise, we'd pick them up with their luggage, do a tour, and then either take them to their hotel or to the airport in time with their flight. 
Okay. You know? Well, let's get back to you. Now, obviously, in '69, this, this didn't come out to the '80s. How did they? How did they find you? Or how did you find 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 it? What's, what's the company called again? Land Sea Tours. Well, Land sea Tours. But how I, they... I've done a lot of jobs in my life just because. Uh, Vancouver is an expensive place, so it creates a lot of motivation to, if you don't want to be homeless with how expensive the place is, you got to work hard to get by, right? So mm -hmm. I've always had a lot of jobs in my life working. So, For instance? Um, I used to work in the film industry a little bit, renting equipment. I've worked in retail a long time at uh, places like uh, big supermarkets. And, mm -hmm. uh, I've done restaurant jobs and stuff. Uh, I was in construction for a while as a labor. And uh, did pretty good at that. That was my last big job before I became a tour guide. Was um, working in construction on high-rise buildings. Mm -hmm. So, okay. So, how did they discover you, or how did you discover them? How well, they... I was moving around a lot, job to job, on the in the construction thing, constantly getting laid off after each job. Mm -hmm. I got kind of tired of like that of that because I don't like sitting around not working for periods of time. Mm -hmm. So, I did a bit of a career decision making mm -hmm. course. I already knew I've always wanted to be a musician, so I've never given up on that. I still do that mm -hmm. part time. But one of the things when I did this um, career assessment course, uh, one of the things that came up as an ideal choice would be tour guide bus driver. So um, I wasn't even looking for the job. My mom phoned me up and said, hey, there's a job in the Georgia Street, which is a local entertainment freebie newspaper. Mm -hmm. And uh, a tour guide bus driver was listed in there. so. I gave him a call after my mom told me about this listing, mm. went in and for an interview and got the job right away, and I've been with them ever since. Mm. So obviously it was a little simple. When you say you're a mus musician, or what, what's your instrument? Uh, guitar is my main instrument, but I also play harmonica and I sing. Well, I should say that vocal is my main instrument because that's like the ultimate natural instrument is vocals. I like the harmonica thing. But yeah, harmonica too. It's a great portable little instrument, right? Just carry it around with it wherever you go. You can travel the world. Yeah. When, and, and, what, and what kind of music was Bush's genre? Oh, well, it's like old school authentic rhythm and blues music. Authentic rhythm and blues means blues, you say. <laughs> well, I like to say rhythm and blues because it's not just blues. It's like early black rock and roll and boogie and you know, oh, about country little, little and western Richard and all that kind of, kind of thing. Yeah. yeah, and a whole bunch yeah. of stuff kind of mixed in. I'm not necessarily just strict blues, so that's why I like to not pigeonhole it into one that's specific so. description. But blues no, no. is definitely yeah. the roots of it for sure. And uh, no musician should do whatever, you know. That's, but that's also, not... I'm very uh, kind of a purist mm. as well. Uh -oh. Like I, no, I mean, I, like I, I'm very dedicated to the art form, and I don't want to um, water it down by. Like, I want to be creative in my approach and stuff, which I do. I'm trying to be myself, but at the same time, I like to be true to the art form and not lose the sense of the authenticity of it. Uh, do, do you, uh, what's, your, what's your band? you have a band? Are you associate band? Are you solo? What are you? Yeah, I play with other people usually in a band setting. So I've got friends that I, a network of friends that I hire depending on who's available. What, 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 what's the user, what's the aggregation, what's the user composition of the band? How many people? Uh, it's usually, uh, most commonly, two guitars, bass, and drums, with uh -huh. me doing also vocals and harmonica. Okay, two guitars. So I usually and... play the band later role in most settings. Okay. Do. It's not always like that. There, I've played in a lot of bands over my the musical part of my life, mm -hmm. many different roles. I've, I've played bass in bands before, and I've kind of like played backup guitar and stuff, mm -hmm. but... For the most part, I'm I'm a lead mm -hmm. kind of role in a band setting. Oh, was that that make you what? What are you, alpha male or something like that? What's going on here? No, what? it's just that that's my talent. So I ah. I, I don't want to ignore what I'm good at, right? Yeah, are you a businessman? I mean, can can can, can you handle the business of it? Because you, know, you know, sort of. So so, so it's, it's yeah, always shady with the you know the payment and and the, and the club owners and all the rest of that stuff. You... No, I'm pretty savvy when it comes to that. I'm. Mm -hmm. um, fairly good at it. It's just that I've never really had enough time to focus on it full time because of the uh, fact that I, I'm going to say it's the setting and the uh, environment that I'm in. Mm -hmm. Vancouver, very corporate, not so friendly to this kind of music. It's a very limited market. The people that are all that are involved in it kind of have the market tied up. So you do have to kind of work hard and be motivated to get anything in Vancouver. Mm -hmm. So to do it full time is it's a bit of a challenge. And I've, I've kind of gotten myself into a position in my life where it's 
um, I got to keep working basically. So it it makes it tough for me to play music full time. Yeah. Well, isn't Vancouver sort of weirdly changed? Well, everything is morphing and changes, but shouldn't the music be? Yeah, there's always corporate gigs, you know, if they want to be entertained. Definitely. If you want to say this is a corporate town, but I mean, oh, yeah. that, don't you think? Not don't you think? What, what's happening at that level? Has, what's the evolution? What's the evolution as vis a vis arts? Well, you got to be very organized when it comes to promoting yourself, right? You got to have a modern version of a promotional um, package called a press kit mm. with an organized website and um, a record of sales and gigs that you've done. And yeah, but who are you like trying that, to convince right? with that? Who? Well, if you want to get a gig here, you got to convince people of that kind of stuff. You got to show them a press kit, an unorganized version of one. Mm. You can't just say, I'm good. Would you like to hear me play? Would you like to come uh, and see me at a performance? Okay, so. They'll just say, oh, you're just another guy that's doing yeah, gigs. Okay. That doesn't mean anything to us. Mm. We want to see that you're, you're organized and you're ready for the big time before we hire you. Mm. It's kind of like that in Vancouver. Yeah. Okay. So you got to be ready to promote yourself in an organized fashion before you're going to get noticed here. What is Vancouver... What's Vancouver closest to in terms of uh, somebody would identify, I'm not saying like New York or Nashville or Austin. I'm just saying, well, what, what would it be comparable to? I'm just saying, not only on music scene, but on the music scene. Well, Vancouver has produced some legends. I mean, Brian mm-hmm. Adams is from here, and mm-hmm. a lot of even film industry people are from here. Uh, Seth Rogen, uh, Ryan mm-hmm. Reynolds, they're from here. And that's just a, just a sampling of a couple of people, right? Mm-hmm. A lot of people have made it big time here. Colin James started his career here in Vancouver. Mm-hmm. So, I mean, those are just a few examples. It goes on and on. There's many people that have, in the, in the music industry, for example, too, like 5440, they're from here. And I mean, I could just go on and on. There's mm-hmm. a big list. Oh, you, in the tour, you... It was also a big scene for the punk rock music in the uh, 70s. Of course, and yes. Right early 80s. Seattle, well, you, you, you were mentioning on the tour that um, uh, Jimmy Hendrix's grandmother was here. With, with... Yeah, Nora Hendrix, uh, she lived... Um, even like ancestors of hers, I think, came up here from the uh, slave trade to mm-hmm. escape what was going on in the U.S. Mm-hmm. So she lived here. Mm-hmm. She lived down in uh, the Chinatown area in uh, Hogan's Alley. Mm-hmm. Worked at a restaurant called V's, where they served. It was a she V. This lady named V. She had this steakhouse. It was called V's Chicken. I think it was called V's Chicken Fried Restaurant or something like that. V's. I know it was called V's. It was in Hogan's Alley, right on Main and Pryor. And um, they served legends after their performances in Vancouver. They would always go to V. She was open all night. She made the best, um, you know, like a cast iron skillet, the, mm-hmm. be- the best yeah. pan fried skillet steaks in Vancouver. Mm-hmm. People like Nat King Cole, Ella Fitzgerald, Louis Armstrong, uh, Sammy Davis Jr., all these kind of people would go to her place after their performances to have dinner and drinks. Mm-hmm. So v- uh, Nora Hendricks actually worked in that restaurant. Mm-hmm. And she lived in a few houses down in Strathcona, the rest of the residential part of Chinatown. And um, so her son, Al Hendricks, lived in Seattle, where Jimmy was born. And Al would send his son Jimmy up here to go to school. And he would stay with Nora when she, when he was here. Mm. And he would hang out outside the restaurant when he was learning to play guitar. Mm. He would be like a regular sight. People would see him. Hey, who's this cool kid on the guitar? Okay. Kind of interesting part. Hogan's Alley was a really interesting spot. It was a mix of black, Italian, and Chinese. Mm-hmm. Everyone got along. It was actually a really cool, uh, integrated part, a cultural mm-hmm. spot in Vancouver. It was completely disrupted when they put in this big causeway, which was originally uh, supposed to be an extension of the, uh, or a, a, a route for the Trans Canada Highway going through downtown. Mm-hmm. But in those days, it was like in the 1950s when they came yeah. up with this idea to put in the highway through the middle of downtown. But they Everyone didn't. was against it. None so they, the uh, causeway was built, but then they rooted the highway around the outside of the city. Yeah. But it took out Hogan's Alley when they put in the causeway, which now, was kind of shameful. That, that's, a, that's, a, that's a tactic. They, they, that's Robert Moses. Well, that's, they, they, that's they, what they, most they, people say, yeah. that it was actually an intentional thing to get yeah. rid of that part yeah. of Vancouver's culture. Yeah. But this is that all over. integration, this... right? Because there was a lot of racism yeah. back in those days. Yeah. Well, yeah. But yeah. who knows? I mean, this is just what people say, right? Yeah. I'm not, I'm not the expert on this. I I've only lived here since 1969. But mm. there is a lot of people that have talked about this discussion about Hogan's Alley, and there's actually some in, some organized sites like on YouTube and stuff. You can read some of the the more experts that were here yeah. when it was happening that can tell you more about it. 
Now, what is your expertise? I mean, uh, I you're a musician. Yep. You're an excellent tour guide. What, what, everybody has more than one talent. What, 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 how would you rate your expertise? What, what is your expertise? What, I don't want to say what you, what would you want to be known for. I'm just saying, what's your expertise? Well, me personally, I just think that I'm kind of, uh, well, I do consider myself good at my music. And I'd probably be better if I was playing full time, which is my goal. That's my real passion. I mean, if I was doing it full time, I think I could be as good as anybody. And that's what I intend on doing. And when I am playing all the time, I am, that's, I am really good at what I'm doing. I'm very skilled. That I'd say that's what I'm probably best at is my music. But I got to be doing it full time to be as good as I, my potential enables me to be. Yeah. Well, how people get in touch with you, with you or your company? When, 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 I have to ask you a standard question. What's, what's your even, whatever? How how people get in touch with you? Well, I have uh, for me personally, I I do have a website and I've got a Facebook page. Uh, actually, just a profile. I'm going to develop a page, but I do have a website as well. I'm still kind of in the finishing stages of BrentLawrence.ca. Yeah. Well, but, um, forget the tour thing. I'm, I guess I'm, your music. If somebody wants to say, "Hey, I believe in this guy," I mean, yeah. Well, what, how do they how do they contact you? Well, keep an eye out on BrentLawrence.ca. It's in, nearing the completion stages of the website, mm. and my contact information will be on there. Spell or you can look me up on on Facebook as well, Brent Lawrence. Yeah, spell it. Um, B R E N T L A W R E N C E. Yeah. Dot C A. Brent Lawrence. Dot C A. We just might have to say that because you know how many different ways people spell Lawrence? Oh, yeah, I know. <laughs> yeah, the, that's yeah. the English version. The French version is L-A-U instead of L-A-W. But I, I learned so that mine from, is the English spelling. I learned that from Cape Town. You know how many different ways to spell something like, like Shireen? Yeah, exactly. Oh, my goodness. That's I right. use it like that. Yeah, the word Lawrence means steep hill. Oh, really? Yeah, it's an old... It actually used to be a... Um, my, sorry, but my first name means that. My apologies. I'm getting mixed up. So here. Brent? Uh, Brent means steep hill, yeah. Mm -hmm. And Lawrence, the surname is an English variation on, or an English version of the surname. Oh, okay. But Brent, you that supposedly, from what I heard, used to be a surname in the old days as well. Mm -hmm. Well, thank you for spending some time. Well, allowing for talking. Oh, you know, yeah. You're a good That's talker. A pleasure. <laughs> we appreciate it. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Definitely.